NBC, family, friends, and neighbors. It's my honor and privilege to welcome you again to virtual church with the Guyana Missionary Baptist Church. I am your superintendent pastor, the Reverend Brenda Curtin Harewood, and I'm delighted that God has given us the gift of yet another day, another Lord's Day, and that we can worship God together in spirit and in truth on this, the fourth Sunday in the season of Lent. God is wonderful and we are grateful that many of us have made a decision to Ex to participate in a special Lenten discipline. Some of us are fasting, we are praying, and we are giving. And during the time of fasting and praying, we are reading through the gospel according to St. Matthew. We want to thank you and to encourage you to stay the course for some of you who might have started and you got sidetracked or things happened and you were a little behind, you didn't catch up with all your reading, please don't give up. Remember, it's, a, it's not about winning or what you accomplished, but it's about spending time with God. So we want to encourage you to get back in on board and to continue the process. So again, welcome on this fourth Sunday of Lent. I want to extend a very special welcome to persons who are joining us in virtual church today but are not regular members of the Guyana Missionary Baptist Church community. Thank you for joining us. If you are not connected with a church community, we want to invite you to consider GMBC and become a part of us. Remember, you can worship with us weekly by um, watching us on our YouTube channel or here on Facebook at 10 o'clock Guyana time every Sunday. Or you can join us in one of our local congregations. Remember some of our congregations are meeting on the first and third Sundays and that would be our congregations in the Pomeroon, on the East Coast and in Kurukururu. Our other congregations are meeting on the second and fourth Sundays. That is if you are at Long Creek or Yarra Cabra. And our congregations in our congregation in Georgetown is meeting weekly at the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Campbellville. So please join us as you are able. I also want to take this opportunity to express special thanks and appreciation to all of you who joined us for our Women Virtual Conference last weekend. Oh yes, God was with us. Our conference was a time of great learning, a time of great fellowship, and meditating and being in the presence with God and with sisters. I want to thank all our presenters. All our presenters were excellent. And if you were not able to join our conference, you don't have to miss it. You can watch the various um, recordings of our conference on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. So please, God will speak to you. The messages, the, the presentations were all a tremendous blessing. I also want to pause and to express thanks and appreciation to all of you for your continuous generosity. We appreciate all that you do and all that you give to continue to be a blessing to our ministry. Thank you for your stewardship of time talent, and treasure. Remember, you can make contact with any of our local pastors and find out how you can give your time and talent. 
For those of you who want to continue to give your resources, remember you can arrange a pickup or a drop off with your local pastor or your local church treasurer. You can also give by MMG or you can make a direct deposit into your local church account. If you are part of the GMBC community in Diaspora, then please remember you can send money by Zelle, Western Union, MoneyGram, PayPal, or International Wire. And thank you for your support. And may God continue to bless you. We want to urge all of you to continue to be careful and to use wisdom as we continue to live amidst a global pandemic. Remember the W's. Wear your mask. Wait six feet apart. Wash your hands often with soap and water or use a sanitizer. Without ceasing, continue in prayer. When available, get vaccinated. I understand that the Ministry of Public Health has started a vaccination campaign and that currently they're vaccinating persons 60 years or older. So if you are in that age category, I urge you, find your spot. That is no way you can get vaccinated and get your shot. I want to raise my hands as a testimony to say that last week I got my second shot and now I am fully immunized. Remember, God is the one who heals and keeps us, but we work together with God. So please, if you, it's your turn, get your shot. We want to encourage all young people between the ages of 14 and 35 to be a part of our upcoming Youth Leaders Retreat. This will be a virtual event and we know our Youth Council has been working hard and they're planning a very spirit-filled, interactive, God-present God um, retreat. And so we ask you to join us and to encourage all youth in your sphere to join us. It will be on Zoom on the 26th, 27th, and 28th of March. And now I want to encourage you to join me in extending a very warm welcome to our worship team today. Our worship team comes to us from the Abrams Creek Baptist Church on the Pomeroon River and the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Campbellville, Georgetown. Our sacred artist today is Sister Rayan Hinkson from the Mount Zion Baptist Church. Our lectors are members of the Abrams Creek Baptist Church and they are Deacon Rohita Williams, Sister Anita Kanai, and Sister Alverna Lewis. Our liturgist for this service is the Reverend Ian Alves, and he is the associate pastor, the assistant pastor at the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Camerville, Georgetown. Today, our preacher is Minister Erwin Lewis, probationary pastor at the Abrams Creek Baptist Church. We are also grateful for our technical support team, Sister Shanice Garway and Brother Shackanil Burnett for their continuous support and service throughout preparing these, these broadcasts. And now I want to ask you to use your chat and to join me in extending a warm GMBC welcome to this worship team. And now let us worship the Lord 
in spirit and in truth as the Reverend Ian Alves leads us in the call to worship. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who may to redeem from the hand of the enemy. Thank you for joining us in this another worship service as we continue the season of Lent. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, the God of all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, accept our humble worship and allow our presence as we draw near to you. Help us not to be distracted during this our time of worship and adoration. Help us to appreciate your unconditional love for us and in our frail attempt at returning the same, my God be merciful unto us. Have you with this service and let everything be done for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, who taught us to pray and say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. We pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And amen. And amen. Sister Real Inkson will now lead us in songs of praise.
We pray that by your grace we are able to dwell in love, peace, and unity all across this nation. We lift up the sick, oppressed, and depressed amongst the people before you and ask that your peace and comfort be granted them, my God. May your healing power continue to be your children's bread. We pray, O oh God, that you give us day by day our daily provisions, for we acknowledge that our welfare and well-being is in your key plans, O oh God. We appeal to your mercy, and we ask forgiveness for our sins, whether it was in thought, word, or deed. We plead the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ over our own wings. Have mercy upon us, O God. We pray for strengthened faith in our times of testing. We ask that you help us to be strong in our Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of his might. May the lives we live be pleasing in your sight, O God. Let our light indeed shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify you, our God. Have your perfect in this service to the God. Even as we ask all his mercies in and through the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, even Christ, and we your people say, Amen.
Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ by grace, ye are saved, and had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. Not of works, least any man should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. This is the scripture of the Lord. May he add his blessings to his words. The Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, reading from verses 14 through 21. John 3, 14 through 21. 21. And this reading will be done by Sister Alverna Lewis. Good morning, Church. My scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 14 through 21. And it reads And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the man up, so the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believing in should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believing in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believe on him is not condemned, but he that believe not is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is a condemnation, that light is, that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth, does evil hates the light, neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does truth. Come to the light, that his deed may be made manifest, that there are work in God. This is the word of God. Thank you, sisters, for the reading of God's word. I trust that we hear his word and continue to let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We will now have our ceremony selection, and this will be done by Sister Ryan Hinkson. Immediately after which, we will hear the preach word. Our preacher today is Minister Irwin Lewis, the probationary pastor of the Abraham Street Baptist Church. Let us prayerfully receive them. Join together as one 
to worship and to praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To receive of Him through the preaching of the Holy Word. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Who is that going to you this morning, Lord? Who is that going to your holy name? And so we give you honor, glory, and praise for waking us to see another day. We thank you for the joy of being alive. For you have blessed us with another day, another opportunity to behold your glory so that we can stand in your awesome presence. For there is none that come to you. There is none that come to your holy name. For your name is the name above all names. Your name is the name that is worthy of all praise. So we magnify and glorify you this morning, God. For this is the day that you have made. And as we continue to rejoice in it, we pray that you will touch us, that you will open up our understanding so that we can receive of you. As you continue to extend your mercy and your grace this morning towards Lord God, we thank you for filling us this morning, Lord God. Fill us, O oh Lord. Fill us to the overflow and have your way through the rest of this service. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. My word for today is entitled, The Christian's Duty. And my scripture text is taken from the one that was read for Ephesians chapter 2, focusing upon verse 10, which reads thus, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, and we shall walk in them. This is the word of God for the people of God. The Christian's duty. What is the Christian's duty? I boldly say to you this morning that God has assigned unto all Christians one specific task. It doesn't matter who we are. We can be the pastor, we can be a prayer warrior, intercessor, caregiver, worship leader. It doesn't matter who we are. As long as we are in a relationship with Christ, there is one specific task that God has ordained for us. This task can be found in Ephesians 2.10. For in Ephesians 2.10, God reveals His assignment unto us. For this assignment is the focus of this verse. For we are His workmanship. We are not the work of our own hands, our imagination, or even of evolution. For we are created in Christ Jesus. It is Christ who created us in the beginning. The Apostle John made this perfectly clear in his Gospel. John 1, 1, he says, For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 3, he says, All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Verse 14, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now the sum total of these verses reveals unto us that all creation was made by Jesus. For He was the Word that was with God, and the Word that was made flesh. And so we were created in Christ Jesus, and here is our assignment. We were created to do good, to do good works. And these good works that we were created to do, it was not for a season, but it is for the rest of our lives. And that's why the Apostle Paul says that we were created on the good works to walk in them. Now these good works that we were created to do, it was ordained and assigned on to us even before we were created. And so we need to go back to the beginning once again. But this time, we go to the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created Adam without sin, without state, and set him in the Garden of Eden to perform one task, to take care of his creations, to keep them in the goodly state that he had created them in. And if we notice the order of creation, God created the heavens and the earth. He created the moon and the stars, on all the living things. And then he created Adam, gave him dominion over all things, and set him in the garden to take care of the creations 
that he had made to keep them in their godly, their godly state. This was the assignment of Adam. But when Adam ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, of the knowledge of good and evil, he caused all mankind to become corrupted, to lose the image that they were created in, and so that everyone who was born was born in bondage unto the enemy because of sin. But in the fullness of time, Jesus came from his holy place and he gave his life to redeem us from that bondage. And when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, we are created anew, we are created afresh, and through the process of regeneration, we are being brought back to the original state that we were created in. But our task remains the same, and that is to take care of God's creation, to keep them in a goodly state. And we are to use the giftings that God has granted unto us to cause sinners to come into a relationship with Christ. And those who already are in a relationship with Christ, to help them to come into a closer and more intimate relationship with Him. Now these good works that we do are to serve one specific purpose. And that purpose can be summed up in one word, repentance. Second Peter 3 9 tells us that the Lord is not slack about His promise as some men come slackness, but is long suffering to us words, not willing that any should suffer, but that all should come to repentance. The Oxford Dictionary states repentance as, or the act of repentance, as one of sincere regret or remorse. But for the Christians, we need to look to the biblical or the scriptural meaning of the word repentance. For repentance goes deeper than what is given in the Oxford Dictionary. Repentance, as it is through the Bible, it is a call, it is a summons to the Christian to come to a place of a personal, absolute, and ultimate, unconditional surrender to the Lord as sovereign of our lives. And repentance also includes an about turn, a 180 degree turn. We turn from doing the things that we used to do. We turn from living a life of sin. We turn from the things of the world and towards doing the commandments of God. That our desires and our focus is set upon doing what God has commanded us to do. For you see, repentance is not only for the sinners. Repentance is also for the Christians because repentance is a way of life. Because it deals with our relationship with God, our absolute and unconditional surrender to God as the sovereign of our lives. And so Jesus tells us in His Word, in John 14, 6, that He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one coming to the Father, but by me. He is the author of repentance. For he is the author and the finisher of our faith. So all our good works that we do must have one purpose. To point people towards the author and the finisher of our faith. To point people towards Jesus Christ who gave his life upon the cross so that we were redeemed from sin. And when we do our good works in order for them to fulfill this purpose to bring about repentance in the lives of unbelievers and in the life of Christians, we need to do them in a specific way. Matthew 5, 16 tells us that we are to do our good works in such a way that when men see our good works, they shall glorify the Father who is in heaven. God is glorified when a sinner comes into a relationship with Christ and he continues to be glorified when those who are in a relationship with him stay focused upon doing his command. God is merciful and he's gracious and he uses whoever he chooses 
So when we do the works of God, let, them, let us do it in a way that it brings honor and glory unto Him. We do not do our works to be glorified of men, but we do our works so men shall see Christ in us, for He is the originator of our good works and come to the place of giving honor and glory unto God. Nebuchadnezzar, the great Babylonian king, whose empire at that time had overshadowed all empires around him, one day was walking through his palace and he was checking out his creation, the majesty and splendor of his kingdom. And he gave himself the honor and the glory, for he said to himself that these things, this kingdom is the creation of my own hands, by my power have I created these things. And immediately he was turned into a beast to wander in the wilderness for a season until he had learned his lesson that our honor and glory is due unto God. For you see, God was using Nebuchadnezzar to achieve a specific purpose, a specific task. You see, God was using Nebuchadnezzar to bring his people, the children of Israel, into a place of submission, into a place of returning unto God, for they had gone astray. They had sinned against the Lord our God by following after foreign gods and straying from the way that God had commanded them to go. So when Nebuchadnezzar took all the glory for himself, he did not realize that it was God who had granted him this power, the authority to have dominion over the children of Israel. And so when we do our good works to be glorified of men, we are bringing ourselves into a place of danger. For our good works must be done in such a way that it reflects God in us, working in and through us. You see, our good works must not be a show. It must not be an exterior decoration. Now, when we look at the many buildings going up in Georgetown, Guyana, those buildings that the Chinese construct, we would notice the fancy exterior, but it is just a fancy exterior. Because if we remove the fancy exterior, we would see the ugliness of the buildings because the buildings have not been completely come have not been properly completed. And so our lives as Christians must not be like these buildings. It must not be an exterior decoration, but it must start from within. Jesus Christ spoke of the Pharisees. They love to stand in the choice places of the market and to receive the glory of men. So when they stand praying, they make all kinds of expressions upon their faces so that people would realize that they were praying and fasting. They have become like actors in the cinema, for they did their works to be glorified of men. And Jesus said, they have already received their reward. But when we do our works to receive the glory from man, there is no reward from, for us with Jesus Christ. And that's why he says unto us, when we pray, let us go in our closet, so our Father, who sees what we do in secret, will reward us openly. It is the Christian's duty to allow the Word of God to be hidden within our hearts, so that that Word, which is anointed and ordained to bring change and transformation, will work within our lives. Holy Spirit will empower that Word, so that it brings the change and the transformation. So we become like the tree which is planted by the rivers of water, which bringeth forth his fruit in his season, whose leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever we do it shall prosper. And therefore, when we preach the word of God, when we sing a worship song, when we give a testimony, when we do our goodly acts, God will empower what we do, so that it impacts some other person, it impacts some other life, to bring the change and the transformation into that life, and to bring that person into a relationship with Christ. 
or it would cause those who are already in a relationship to be more focused upon doing the things of God. Because when people see us doing our good works, knowing who we were, and seeing the change of in us, when they do their investigations, they would only come to one conclusion that is the Lord God who is, in, who is at work in us that has caused us to be this way. And therefore, as we do our good works, as we do good, let us do it in such a way that we honor and glory unto God. For it is God who empowers these acts that we do so that they can impact someone else to bring them into the place of having a relationship with Christ. So my brothers and sisters, as we go about doing our godly duty, as we go about doing our Christian duty, let's do it in such a way that honor and glory comes out of God. For this is the purpose of our Christian duty to bring honor and glory unto God, to point the way to Christ, so that the sinner can come into a relationship with the one who gave his life upon the cross. And so as they come into that relationship, God can have his way in their lives. And so honor and glory will come out as much as me. This is the word of God. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, all who are watching this broadcast, you have heard the word of God. God is good. He's ultimately good. And He wants each and every one of us to be in a relationship with Him. And if you are not in a relationship with Christ, I think it's about time you find yourself in a relationship with Him. Because He is the one who gave us life upon the cross so that we can be saved from the destruction to come. Those who already are in a relationship with Him, I urge you to get into a closer relationship with Him. Learn to meditate upon the Word of God. As the psalm says, He who meditates upon His Word day and night, He will bear fruit much fruit God has ordained for us to walk in our good works. And so today, I just want to remind us of the word of God. Let us seek to do what He has commissioned us to do, to make disciples of all nations. And so this time, I would just like to say a little prayer. Let's bow our heads. Lord, today we come once more, once again, into your presence, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, may you help us at this time, this Lenten season, Lord God, that we reflect upon our lives, that we reflect upon who we are and where we are with you, Lord God. And as we look to ourselves, oh Lord God, we pray that you will reveal unto us the areas, O Lord God, that needs improvement. And that you would empower us, Lord God. You would give us the strength that we can draw closer to you, O Lord God. We thank you for the change and the transformation even now, Lord God. So that as we go about doing our good works, we will be able to touch hearts and minds and souls with you, Lord God. And help them to be drawn into a relationship with you, Lord God. For it is from you, Lord God, who that comes all power. And Lord God, we thank you to the O Lord God. We thank you, O Lord God, for the power, for the strength, O Lord God, that we can carry on and do what you have commanded us to do. Have your way even now, in and through our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. go one from the other. We want to go with the anointing of God upon our lives. We want to go so that we can overcome whatever trouble 
whatever trials that we will and will present itself before us. Because the word of God assures us that if our desire is to live godly, we will face trials and tribulations, we will face persecutions. So today, let us look to that. Lord, as we leave one from the other, Lord God, we pray, O oh Lord God, that you would go with us, O oh Lord God, that your presence would always be with us. Lord God, that you would help us, O oh Lord God, to overcome the trials and the tribulations, to make a way where there seems to be no way, Lord God. That you would give us the strength that we can make it through. For your word assures us that you are our provider, and you provide a way that we can make it out of the temptation, O oh Lord God. So Lord, we pray, O oh Lord God, that you will keep us by your mercy and your grace. That you will preserve us, O oh Lord God. That you will protect us from the pestilence that walketh by day and even by night, O oh Lord God. That you will keep your children, O oh Lord God, in such a way, O oh Lord God, that we can be united once again in the future to worship of the things of holy name. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace. Have your way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, for the benediction, which is taken from the book of Ephesians, and it reads, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen.